Oh, either way, I got a package. Yeah. And I should get a knife. And maybe wait for some people to arrive. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, I guess I'll upload this as a video as well. Let's see. This is very random, but a very random time of day, so I don't know if there will be anyone who even sees this. Well, there's one person who sees it, so uh, there's that at least. <coughs> so, let's see. Can I even see the chat somewhere? Ugh, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, anyway, as you can see, I'm going to do a live unboxing, so let's hope there aren't any rocks in there instead of what I hope is in there. But um, we will see. Um, yeah, I'm just going to wait for about a minute. Hello, will the World War II collector? <laughs> this is pretty random because I wasn't sure if it was going to arrive today because the seller didn't provide me with any tracking number, so um, I couldn't really plan it. But I just wanted, well, now that I have it, I really just want to open this box. <laughs> Understandably so. Um, <coughs> I guess we'll just start already. Here, here, and here. Well, it certainly sounds like a helmet, so that's good. Right. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's what we like to see. Okay, nice. Got a bit of rust there, but that's not really too bad. Um, so yeah, for the two people that are there, <coughs> what do you think it is? Or oh, what type of helmet? I mean, so far you can't see too much, so I'm going to have you guess. <laughs> yeah, good thing it's not a brick, but I can see what it is now, and it's exactly what I wanted. So that's good, because uh, I wasn't too sure, but... Um, yeah, it's a German helmet, but what type of German helmet is an M16, 17, 18, M35, M40, M42? Because I don't think you can see from here, so then I'll make it a bit more interesting, I guess. I guess I'll just remove some of the funny stuff here, so you can get a better look at it. Ooh, it looks so nice. No, it's an M... 16. It's not an M35, but um, good call. I mean, the pen kind of looks similar-ish. But uh, yeah. Whoopsie. There we go. <laughs> no, it isn't that nice. Oh wow, the liner is really, really nice. Actually, it's just. Uh, it's just pulled through there. Uh, well, the pin is a bit loose, but that's not too bad. And what's got a name there too? Ooh, that's very nice. And some unit markings, which would look really, really cool. Some white crap, which I'll remove. It's a Gnüchtel, uh, I think it's called. Um, 62. Let's see if we can see any markings on the liner. Um, if I even know where and what to look for. Because <laughs> I never had one of these. I never had a World War One helmet for that matter. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, this one was really cheap as well. It was just 160 euros. And um, yeah, that is pretty amazing. Let's see if we can see any markings in the dome. Yeah, it's pretty dusty, but yeah, I can see something there. Or eight five or something. Uh, let's see if you can see. Yeah, kind of. I have to wipe down the dirt and stuff so you can see it better. But yeah, it's just uh, really, really nice. <laughs> Well, good thing this 
live stream idea wasn't a complete failure. I mean, if this had just been a brick or something, that would be kind of bad, but <laughs> alas, we've got a very nice M16 helmet made in, uh, I think it's Brno, so in, uh, well, back then it was called Brun. So yeah, and uh, this one comes from Bavaria, from, I think it was called Pocking, so it's near the Austrian border. And, uh, yeah, I guess someone just had it lying around like this in an attic and was, I don't know, <coughs> repainting something with chalk-based paint and now it's got that on there. But that shouldn't be too hard to remove, or well, maybe it's bird poop, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it just comes right off, that's good. Just going to take a wet rag or something and wipe it down. Too bad the split pin back here is a bit loose, but um, nothing too bad. At least the liner is still where it should be. Same for the... Yeah, that's the drawstring. It's still there, but it's ripped. Um, yeah. See anything here? Where even are the ink stamps on these liners? I really don't know. But actually, the leather is really nice. Huh. Not something I would have expected. Mm, can't see anything there. Let's see if we can see anything here without damaging anything. No, that's just a dark spot. Well, anyway, that doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's a 62, that's correct. G62. Mm. Oh, I'll have to look up these unit markings because they look really cool. And, um... Even I guess I can do the wiping the dust of it uh, live too, so give me a second and I'll get a uh, rag or something. Side, and I'll be right back. Let's see what we've got in the case. Okay, someone is saying random things. Interesting. Mm, let's check for any messages. Oh, anyway. Here we are. Well, it's just an old t-shirt that I have around because I didn't find a rag. Okay, let's give a little wipe down. Hello, Anton Jensen. <laughs> I know it's been a while since I did anything on this channel, and I'm sorry about that, but I was kind of busy with university and studying and all that crap. And I still am, but uh, this I definitely had to film. <laughs> It's going to look very nice. I think I just got this big rust spot here and the rest is just really, really nice. <laughs> now let's try it off. on the inside, which is a lot more dusty. I'll have to do something about that weird white stuff. <laughs> this is going to be one nice looking helmet. Well, it already is, but it's going to look even nicer when it's clean. Let's see for the name. Well, 
it's pretty worn down, but it's actually a pretty long lane. See, it goes from here to about there still. Grab some of the dust off the liner. Carefully though, don't want to damage the leather. It is a hundred years old after all, well, more than that actually now. Let's just use the dry side of it actually. Yeah, it does the trick just as well. Oh, this is no, it's not in the shot. Wait, not about as much. Not the wet side. There it is. Want to damage anything, so I gotta be careful. I do want to see that nice green paint. Carefully pull it up, wipe it out, just like that. Yeah, some things falling out, that's interesting, they were stuck here, interesting, <laughs> if there's any more kind of crap between here, yeah, there is, sweet, right, I just need to get the to go somewhere where it isn't in my room. Let's just get it right into the box. And about like that. <coughs> yeah, it's dusty. Yes, it is a World War One helmet, that is correct, it's an M16. Yeah, I think that about does it for that bit of the clean. I guess I'll do a bit more on this little pad and, uh, and try to remove the white crap here. I can just scrape it off, that's good. Something made of plastic, so I don't just ruin my fingernails. Yeah, that's working well. That is good. And of course, there's some baby crying in the background. <laughs> Do mm. 
me help you. Nope. Wipe over it again. Remove any residues. care about that bit of white stuff still on the dome and um, yeah we're done now it's nice and cleaned up and ready to be put in the collection let me check the chat so we can see if he has said anything interesting uh, right ah so much in the chat <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Nice World War One helmet. <laughs> um, well, you have to be very careful on eBay. Uh, well, that's replying to the World War Two collector because he said, "Is it okay to buy from eBay?" Because I have seen a single decal Luftwaffe helmet, I'm considering buying. Uh, it's best if you put it on a forum first, so people can vet it out. Because if it's trash, you will waste a lot of money. <laughs> you just need to know what to look for. <laughs> uh, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, the first helmets I bought were kind of crap as well, so you gotta be careful with fakes and stuff. Um, yeah, that's true. What were well, one British helmet had asbestos padding somewhere in the liner, so you ought to be careful with that, so you don't get lung cancer. <laughs> Fresh pineapple wants me to say the word hello, so there you go. Uh, right. uh, this is original, yeah, this one is definitely the original. <laughs> right. Um. Well, Harry. I mean, you have to kind of look out for yourself if you want to get a nice M35 or M40 for a cheap price. Uh, it's kind of difficult to get them. <laughs> um, also, as for spray paint, as I just saw, um, well, I guess the best one you can get is from Militär, like though there. Feldgrau is kind of a bit too green, so I had my own kind of stuff mixed. Um, by the way, thank you, KTTM. Uh, I mean, for 200 US dollars, that is all right, I guess, as long as it's not too fitted for a shell. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's certainly a nice helmet, and I mean, for the price I paid, it was really. But well, I guess, actually, I can tell you the story about how I bought this. So I was just randomly um, checking eBay clearance, and uh, coincidentally, the same minute. I uh, looked it up. This uh, ad had just gone online, and uh, well, it was for 150 euros, well, 160 with shipping. And I already knew that people would be flocking to this like crazy, so I immediately called the seller because he did leave a cell phone number there and secured it. <laughs> so that's how I got it. Because otherwise, I doubt I would have gotten it because people would have just bid a whole lot more on it. But um, alas, for once, I got lucky. I mean, I've seen a bunch of really nice helmet sell there for like 50 euros. <laughs> yeah, true. 150 is really cheap. I mean, um, usually just a blank shell that is in decent condition costs about 200. So to get a complete one with a liner and even one of the chin strap mounting thingies for 150 is just insane. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The M16 is really a pretty interesting looking helmet. I mean, it's. Just the quintessential World War One aesthetic. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. So let's see. Well, 
maybe I can show you again from the inside how it looks now that it's a bit more clean. Maybe if we move it into the light, like so. No, why should I change out the liner? It's original and it's original to the helmet. It would completely ruin it. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't advise to change out an original liner. <laughs> but uh, where were the markings? There they are. I think it's R. No, it's the other way around, sorry. But yeah, it was an R. R85. Or 86? I don't know, something like that. Kind of hard to see. And you can see the G62 again. Yeah, that's true. In Germany, especially on eBay, the prices really go up insanely high so um to find one as cheap as this oh also in germany uh, is a rarity <laughs> so i'm all the more happy that i got it because it's just yeah for once it's not a completely rusted to bits helmet it's actually in just very nice kind of well definitely attic find condition because it was actually an attic find <laughs> and uh yeah I also asked the uh, seller if they had anything else um, as far as you know, war related items go. Apparently they had some belt buckle or something, so I might look into that. But uh, as for this, I'm already pretty happy. Oh, well, not just pretty happy, I'm really happy because it's well, my first World for one helmet as well and it was really cheap. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely leave it as is because it's in original condition and it's got just a lot of original paint actually. <laughs> so there's no reason to do anything with it other than what I've already done. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to allude to, Katie. Because, I mean, all things considered, this liner is actually in pretty good condition. I mean, this pad is complete and pretty nice this one is as well this one well it has seen better days let's just say that but it's not too bad it's still complete it's just ripped through but uh, yeah it'll stay like that can we see anything I really don't know whether any markings are on these World War one liners so I can't say if they're on the outside of the leather or on the inside or anywhere really <laughs> I just know the rough shape and that's it and also the uh, chin strap hook knopf 91 thingy um, is made of steel and painted in feldgrau. Yeah, that might be worth a shot to try to get at this rust spot, but uh, well, we'll see. Yeah, that's true. I mean. Only thing is that that will be even more expensive. <laughs> I mean, I don't actually know how much these usually go for, but I'm guessing like 500 or something in this condition. So, yeah. Which helmet do I like more, M16 or M35? Well, too bad I recently sold my Quist M35, so I can't really show that. But I guess we can. Come on, move out the way. them next to each other, like that. Get this one here. So now we have both here. <laughs> Make sure the charging cable actually comes with us, because my phone will just die otherwise. Come on, rotate. Here we go. Well, I think both helmets are really quite cool, M35 and M16, I mean, both are um, the starting kind of helmet for one of the wars, I mean, this is World War One and this is World War Two. so <laughs> they are certainly nice in their own way, they both have kind of that smooth paint usually, though 
there's obviously more variety as far as paints and camouflage patterns etc goes with these all oh, these also are very nice uh, and unique looking liners whereas the m31 liner looks pretty similar throughout i mean yeah <laughs> So well, this one right here doesn't have a liner in it right now. I actually got that shower for free from uh, someone I know. They've had it since well, they can remember, so their entire life pretty much. Apparently it's from their grandfather or something, and it's a Luftwaffen Feldivision M35, because you can see the Luftwaffe Eagle. Yeah, you can see a bit of the wing. Yeah, it is right there. And you can also see the tricolor here, and it's got a Feldgrau overpaint with some wood chips and also a tan camo on it, which makes this a Luftwaffen Felddivision helmet used late in the war. And, uh, yeah, for free, of course, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you do get lucky, but I'm not going to sell any of the things that I did get for free because. Well, usually I know the people and I know where it came from and it makes it all the more interesting than something I bought online. I mean, the thing with the World for One helmets is also that they've got this pretty unique aesthetic with the huge ventilation bolts and just the bigger size, I guess. Um... Hello, John the second, Johnson the second. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep them like this because that's uh, how I got them and that's how they're supposed to be because they're in original condition. And also I should clarify, I didn't get this one today. I got this uh, like half a year ago, a bit more. And this is what came in today. So I guess I'll show you too. So yeah. <laughs> Just a nice M16 Stahlhelm. How many helmets do I have? Well, now that it's a live stream, I can actually show you. So, I guess we'll do that as well, because now the main thing is over, which is the unboxing and cleaning it up a bit. So... Right. These are just some shells I'm currently restoring. Um, here are some other helmets. These are also restored. I used them for reenacting. That's a Luftschutz M, uh, VZ 32-34, there's some N4R helmets, a Bundesgrenzschutz helmet, an Italian one, Soviet one, French one, uh, two American ones, and a fire department one. Then we've got a Soviet helmet that I restored. It's uh, an original shell with an original liner, which is pretty nice and it was cheap. <laughs> That's mainly why I got it. And, uh, right. Here's some others. That's my Quist M40 and the helmet Bible. <laughs> uh, this one, this is one I restored. I unfortunately didn't make any videos about it. As you can see, I also aged the liner and did a camo paint job on it and everything. Um, then we've got the Civil Fire Service or Civil Fire Service, as it should be, M34, which is also pretty cool. That's not the M42 I once uh, restored because I also sold that one. But I'm going to keep this one because it was cheap and it has the same history. And, uh, oops. Right, on top of the metal detecting finds, we got an M35 here. It's a relic though. Or the liner band and stuff. It was found, I think, somewhere in Bavaria as well. It's pretty nice, especially the liner band, which is dated 1938. It's a Luftwaffe helmet. Um, yeah, as far as helmets go, that's currently what I've got here. Oh, oh, there's another fire department helmet. They just are kind of everywhere. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I used to have... Well, this entire chest was covered with helmets because I was restoring them. They were like about 20 there, but uh, in recent months I will ship them back to the people who bought them. So yeah, well, I guess I can also show this one. That's the one I used at my last event, which was about two weekends ago. 
and uh, yeah, it's a Quist M42. I restored it again for the 500th time, and uh, yeah, it's also got a liner that I made in it. As you can see, it's a bit aged now, and it looks pretty nice. And uh, it's got a nice reproduction chin strap, which is really nice quality. It's an older repro, and uh, yeah, dome stamp and everything. Oh, it should help. Sure, the camera is actually where it ought to be, like so. Now let's get back to reading the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Anton. Oh, um, would be nice if this channel would grow a bit, but I guess for that I'll have to make more videos than I currently am making because I mean the last one was like 50 days ago, and uh, sorry about that. Um. See what else you say. Yeah, I could kind of. Well, that's the thing. A lot of people have already told me that with all the helmets I have, I could just make a new army. <laughs> uh, thank you, Katie, by the way. Uh, yeah, the collection has kind of grown over the past years. I mean, I started in like late 2018 ish. Yeah, that's where I got my first helmet. It wasn't very good though. Yeah, that's true. I got my Stilhandgranate there, just in case it's uh, needed. <laughs> um, well, I mean, two German helmets is already a nice start. Oh, by the way, I guess we can now put these helmets in their place. I've got an idea. Alright. Um, maybe we can just do this. It stands on top of this chair. Because I'd like to arrange them kind of chronologically. So we're going to move this out of the way because it's restored. And I prefer to just have completely original helmets here. So, and this here, an M35. And the M16 right here. Okay, move that there. Now oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice, Anton. <laughs> but yeah, now I've got the line of helmets again. Yeah, that's how it should be. <laughs> Too bad it's not really focusing right now, but that's not much I can do about it. But um, yeah, anyway, um, I think that's going to be it for this little unboxing stream. Yeah, I mean, this one could have very well been at Verdun, actually. <laughs> Since it did come home with some soldier, obviously, after the war. Otherwise it would have kind of probably been destroyed or something. So maybe it's all Verdun or something else on the eastern, or western or southern fronts. Yeah, it could have also been in Italy, for all we know. So, let's see, where do I even... Because I don't want to kind of randomly click somewhere and end the stream. I really don't know. Uh, this is the first time I've done a stream like this from my phone. But it's worked pretty well, so I'm definitely going to do it again when I... For example, make some liners or something, I guess. Um, so yeah, if you have any further questions, just ask them now, because I'm probably going to end it in a few uh, minutes. Yeah, my backyard isn't very big, because I live in an old town, and we don't really have a backyard. We just have a terrace kind of thing, um, and that's about it because it's, well, inside the old city. I can't really make a bunker here. Uh, just no space. We have an old cellar, so there's that, I guess. I mean, the house I live in is about 400 years old. But, um, yeah, I can't really dig anything here. Uh, though we do have a garden that is uh, well, outside the city walls. So I guess there I could do something like that. But, uh, well, I prefer to just go to events rather than dig around in my backyard and then just be able to look about 20 meters ahead and that's about it. Um, because obviously at events you've got a much larger area. Yeah, glad you enjoyed it, Will. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I'm probably going to do some handicrafty kind of things. Also some kind of experimental archaeology things because I did make like pottery and stuff in the, the old way and fired it. <laughs> yeah, okay, you can't really dig a trench in a flat. I mean, then you'll just uh, probably annoy the neighbors a bit. <laughs> Well, you could try. I mean, you'd be like, yeah, I mean, there's a war going on, you know. Um, but, yeah, I did dig a trench with a friend, actually, but the thing is, where I live, uh, in the Eifel, the ground is just kind of made of rock, so trying to dig anywhere here is uh, a pain. You need a pickaxe after about uh, this much ground. <laughs> and then you're just, yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Let's just keep it at that. Let's see what else was said. Right, anyway, I'll see you next time. Well. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed and see you then. <laughs>